The heating element is glowing hot. The flame is nice and blue. Everything is wonderful. The problem is the, the ice box area never gets cold ever and the refrigerator never gets cold ever. So let's go through this process together on diagnosing and troubleshooting this refrigerator and I hope it'll add value to you. Hi folks, this is Darren with My RV Works. Today we're in Port Angeles, Washington. We're working on this refrigerator and it's on a 2012 Lance travel trailer. Um, so it's garage capped. It's in very nice, clean condition for an RV that's um, what, uh, 12, uh, 12 years old? Okay, so here's what the customer states on the refrigerator. They've done everything before they called us. So basically the heating element is glowing hot. The flame is nice and blue. Everything on this refrigerator is working flawlessly. Um, you've got the right amperage going to the heating element, the right uh, LP pressure. Everything is wonderful. The problem is the heat, the, um, what is it? The, the ice box area never gets cold ever and the refrigerator never gets cold ever. So what is going on with this? Uh, now I, already been working on it. Um, I'm almost done and, and I'm like, well, hey, for your benefit, let me throw a video together. I'm doing handheld thing, so just bear with me. So I've already moved the refrigerator forward. So let's go through this process together on diagnosing and troubleshooting this refrigerator and I hope it'll add value to you. If we go into this opening, you'll see that I've already pulled the refrigerator forward. To get your refrigerator forward, it's just several screws along that bottom flange there. I did have to cut some of the sealant that they had right here to hold it. You would turn off your LP, and I usually, when I take LP off, I always just, this is just loosely connected in here, but I don't want any debris to get in there. And then just a little plastic plug over that, just to keep that clean. Uh, we've disconnected our, our DC circuits, put a little bit of tape on the, uh, the live one, and I put a little tail on it just to make it easy to peel it off. And then I've certainly unplug your receptacle. So you pull it forward, and um, there's no point in going inside because all the problems going on the inside, uh, on the outside here. So, if I were to get my thumb out of the way, okay? So if I touch this, this is hot to the touch, okay? Now, if you've seen my other videos, um, I, I've talked about how to diagnose your refrigerator just using, using your hands to feel temperature. So I've already got the cover open a little bit. So you're gonna feel how hot this is, and this was too hot to touch, very, very, very hot. If I would've kept my hand on it, it would've burned me. And then you feel over here, and you're gonna actually feel up Let's look the lighting. Can I make it a flashlight? Hold on. Bear with me. There, I'll just do that. So when you're feeling these coils, you want to feel them up pretty high. Okay, so these are cold, cold, cold. Okay, but this is so hot you can't even touch it. Okay, so in that instance, you have a blockage. Okay, so that is to say that your boiler is boiling your water, your ammonia is vaporizing out of it, and it goes up, 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 way up to there. It goes through those fins, okay? That's where our, our ammonia vapor that's in this part of the tube is going to go through those fins and cool down and become an ammonia liquid. Uh, I'll try not to give you some glares on it, but but down in here, I've got some, some like it's, it's orange on my FLIR screen, okay? But then when I go up, way up in there, it stops. Uh, now, I don't know how well I'm gonna be able to get this done, but if you see, let me stick this way up in there, um, you'll see that the orange becomes blue. So our blockage in our cooling unit is right where the turn happens and it goes into those fins there. So you'll see the fins are cold. If we come down here, we can see that that's cold as opposed to right over here. And this is just radiant. I had this, I've had this thing off for maybe 20 minutes. So it is cooling down a little bit, but you can get to see some of the coloring in the heat. But when this thing was still on, you just have to trust me on this. I took my meter and I shined it way up there and the blockage is happening way up at that top. Therefore, we're never getting the ammonia into our condenser fins up at the top and you're not getting ammonia through there. Uh, you're not getting the ammonia going into the back of the cooling unit, which is this boxed area right here where it's got this little profile. So this is the cooling unit right there. The, the, all the metal pipes here are called the cooling unit, but that's the business end of it. That's where you have the, the minus 22 degree taking place. Anyway, so let me pull myself back out of here. 
Okay, so to get to some of that, yes, you do need to pull your refrigerator forward to be able to, to get there. You could just use your hand. You don't have to have this fancy, what is this thing, a FLIR, uh, I don't know. Um, I don't know the mark, part number, but anyway, you can find them. Uh, if you're doing this professionally, then I would recommend a FLIR meter. Um, if you're just doing this because you're cooling, your refrigerator's not working, then you could just touch your hand and you can just feel along with your hand and where the where it's hot, where it's cold. This refrigerator does not have yellow sodium chromate. Turning my flashlight back on. So sometimes what we will see is, is like a yellow powder and you'll smell a strong ammonia liquid and you'll see it right in this area here. This is the hottest part and this is where you might have a rupture. This is really, really clean. Uh, as we follow the, um, the boiler up towards the top up there, it gets a little crusty where the paint has cooked off because it's getting so hot it can't circulate. So this is just like a trapped body of water, uh, distilled water and ammonia that's just, just cooking itself, but it's not flowing through everything else. Anyway, so that's what I wanted to share with you guys. That's what's going on with this refrigerator. So how do we fix this? There is no field fix for this. What we would need to do is take a picture of the serial number, not, well, not necessarily the serial number, but the model number of this refrigerator. Um, you can find cooling units online. We like working with Chris at Cool Fun RV. We've been working with them for a number of years. We don't get paid or anything for that, but it's just We've had very good luck with working with Cool Fun RV on their cooling units. Um, so he's probably got one of these things sitting in his warehouse. You order a new cooling unit. And then I've got videos of me swapping out cooling units. We'll let this customer know what is wrong with this one. If they opt to have a new cooling unit put on, it might be an opportunity for us to get a video of me doing another cooling unit for you guys. Um, so anyway, the solution to fix this blockage would be to replace the cooling unit. Um, and that would be the fix. There are folks that will tell you to bang on the pipes and turn their unit upside down, and that's fine. Um, that might work temporary. Also, sometimes if you take your RV and you drive it down the road, that might, just the sloshing around might help break up that blockage. Um, but the problem is the sodium chromate has crystallized inside of the tubes and you've got big flakes and little flakes and all this kind of stuff and the blockage more than likely will return. Um, the problem you get there is there's a relationship between the sodium chromate in the tubes and the ammonia. Um, these things work. It's a story of ammonia evaporation and um, uh, evaporation of ammonia into a hydrogen environment and distilled into water. And I've done a video on that. I don't want to get into it right now. But um, this, this ammonia is awesome, but it's also extremely corrosive to steel. Um, so they put the sodium chromate in there to kind of balance that out. If the sodium chromate should crystallize and get out of solution, now your, your ammonia has kind of got the upper hand. And so a lot of times you'll find a blockage, and then after the blockage, you'll find a leaker. Um, starting with the blockage because, um, so I guess my point is what I was saying is banging on it with a hammer, turning it upside down might clear the blockage, but the relationship between the sodium chromate and the ammonia is now out of balance and it's just a temporary fix. So, uh, to fix it right, you got to swap out your cooling unit. There's no point in swapping out your entire refrigerator. The refrigerator itself is fine. It's just the metal tubes here that you get to swap out uh, a couple hundred bucks for a cooling unit. And then, um, operation like this might be four hours or so to do. Uh, like I said, I've got videos on that. So, hey, if this was helpful, thumb it up, share it with your friends. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our channel. we got a lot of stuff over on Patreon for folks over there as well. So I wish you good luck in troubleshooting your refrigerator. So this is Darren signing off. I'll see you in the next video.